Hey there Seahawks, it's Miss Adams and in this video we're going to talk about dot plots which is a uh, display for quantitative data. All right, a dot plot shows each data value as a dot above its location on the number line. When we're making a dot plot by hand we want to draw and label the axes, we want to scale the axis, and then we want to plot the values. All right, an example of making and interpreting a dot plot. Noble's Amusement Park in Ellisburg, Pennsylvania has earned a claim for being an affordable, family-friendly entertainment venue. Noble's does not charge for general admission or parking, but it does charge customers for each ride. How much do the rides cost at Noble's? The table shows the cost of each ride from a sample of 22 rides in a recent year. Make a dot plot of these data. All right, so when you're making a dot plot from scratch, you probably want to look and see what's your smallest value, what's your largest value. So our lowest cost is $1.25, the highest cost is $3. So I'm going to go ahead and count by quarters from $1.25 all the way up to $3. And then I'm going to see how much um, I have in each category. So I have four for $1.25, I have eight for $1.50, I have six, $1.75, I have one at $2, one at $2.50, and one at $3. Explain what the dot above 2 represents. Well, there's only one dot above 2, so I can go and look and see what ride that matched up with. So that was the Stratos Fear, which cost $2 to ride. What percent of the rides in the sample cost $1.50 or less? So I'm going to count all the dots that are $1.50 or less, which is 12 out of the total 22 uh, rides, which is 0.545 or 54.5%. All right, describing shape. So when you're asked to describe the shape of a dot plot or any quantitative display, um, you want to focus on some main features. You want to look for major peaks, um, not just minor ups and downs. Uh, you want to look for clusters of values and any obvious gaps. And you want to decide if the distribution is roughly symmetric or clearly skewed. All right, so in the bottom left, we have skewed to the right. The tail is on the right side. So for the skew part, it's all about the tail where it's like trailing off. Whatever side that's on where there's fewer, that's what's skewing the data. Um, the roughly symmetric is going to be kind of a mirror image on both sides. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's roughly symmetric. Bimodal is when it has two peaks. Roughly uniform is when it's kind of flat. And then skewed to the left, the tail is going to be on the left side. All right, when you're asked to describe a distribution for quantitative data, you want to use the acronym SUCKS, um, which stands for shape, unusual features, which includes outliers, center, and spread. Spread is also sometimes called variability. Um, the median, the median is the middle value of the ordered set of data, and an outlier is a value that falls outside the overall pattern. It doesn't really fit with the trend of the rest of the data. All right, describing and comparing distributions. Nitrates are organic compounds that are a main ingredient in fertilizers. When those fertilizers run off into streams, the nitrates can have toxic effect on fish. An ecologist studying nitrate pollution in two streams measures nitrate concentration at 42 places on Stony Brook and 42 places on Mill Brook. The parallel dot plots display the data. So we have two dot plots. Okay, they're using the same number line, so they're using the same scale, so you can kind of compare them. Explain what the dot above 12 and Stony Brook graph represents. So this dot here. So one of the places on Stony Brook that was sampled had a nitrate concentration of 12 milligrams per liter, is what that dot is representing. What percent of nitrate concentration measurements from each stream exceed 10 milligrams per liter? So I'm going to have to do this two separate times, one for Stony Brook, one for Millbrook. All right, so exceed 10, which means it's more than 10. For Stony Brook, I had two out of the 42 total uh, data points or samples that were above 10, which is 4.8%. Uh, for Millbrook, I had 11 out of the 42, which is 26.2%. Describe the shape of the two dot plots. Does either distribution have any outliers? 
All right, so for Stony Brook, we would say um, skewed right, uh, no apparent outliers. And then Millbrook is actually fairly symmetric. Um, there's not a super obvious skew, um, but it does seem like maybe 18 and 20 milligrams per liter may be outliers. Compare the centers of these two distributions. All right, so nitrate concentrations for Stony Brook tend to be lower with a median at about five milligrams per liter than Millbrook, which has a median at about eight milligrams per liter. Is the variability in nitrate concentration for the two streams similar or different? Justify your answer. So remember, variability is talking about the spread, how spread out they are. And just by looking, I can see that Millbrook is a lot more spread out than Stony Brook, so they're different. The nitrate concentration for Stony Brooks vary less from 0 to 12 milligrams per liter than Millbrook, which is from 0 to 20 milligrams per liter. All right, go Seahawks.